we had seen that unit fractions could be written as 1 over any natural number and this natural number was, was called as denominator. So let's say we have 1 by 7. So 7 here is the denominator. And what does it show on a number line? Now this denominator 7 tells me that unit length has to be divided into 7 equal parts. So I have this unit length and I divide it into 7 equal parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this 7 equal parts. Similarly from 1 to 2, again this is a unit length. This is also a unit length. So any unit length could be divided into 7 equal parts. And what does 1 by 7 tell me? 1 by 7 gives me one of those equal parts. So 1 by 7 is actually telling me the length of one such equal part. So that is how I can read unit fractions. So 1 by 2 would be, I divide this unit length into two equal parts. 1, 2. And half gives me the length of one such part. Similarly, 1 by 3 would be dividing in three equal parts. And 1 by 3 is the length of one such equal part. 1 by 4 would be dividing into four equal parts. And 1 by 4 indicates the length of one such part. Similarly, we have 1 by 5, length of one part when divided, when a unit is divided into five equal parts. And so on, I can get 1 sixth also. What we observe is, that as I am increasing my denominator, 3, 4, 5, 6, what is happening is that the length is shifting towards the left of half. So I have half, I am shifting towards the left. What I observe is that these unit fractions could not represent all the numbers from 0 to 1. From 0 to half I am getting all the numbers, but in between half and 1, I could not get any number which was being represented by a unit fraction. So what do we do? Now Egyptians came up with a unique way of adding unit fractions till we get a desired number which was greater than half but still less than 1. For thousands of years, only unit fractions were accepted but later when they started adding unit fractions to get a desired number which was greater than half and less than one, those fractions were called as common fractions then. Let us see what these common fractions were. So we know that one by three is the length of one part when this unit is divided into one, two, three, three equal parts. Now if I add one by three to this, I see that this number is greater than half but is less than 1. So this is what I wanted, a number which was more than half and less than 1. Similarly, what this is that if they add 1 by 4 2 times 1 and 2, then they see that they get the same length as half. And similarly, if they add 1 more 1 by 4, then that number would actually be more than half and less than 1. So what they observed was that 1 by 4 added 2 times was same as half. So 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 was 2 by 4 which was same as half. Now again if 1 by 4 was added again. So if I add 1 more 1 by 4 I get 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which is 3 by 4. So what they observed is that this 3 by 4, now this fraction 3 by 4 did not have 1 at the top. The number at the top was not 1, it was no more a unit fraction. They got very common later on and hence they were called as common fractions. Now common fractions could have any number at the top and any number as denominator. So these numbers were represented as P by Q p by q where p and q could be any integers now. So we know that 4 and q were called the denominators. The number at the top was called as numerator. 
So 3 and P, which is the number at the top, was called as numerator. And we already know that the number at the bottom was called as denominator. So I have this fraction, common fraction 3 by 4, where 3 is the numerator, 4 is the denominator. Now what does 3 by 4 tell me? We know the denominator indicates how many divisions should this unit length have, that is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I divide the unit length into 4 equal parts. What does 3 indicate? 3 indicates the number of such units, 1, 2, 3. So 3 of such units gives me 3 by 4. So 1 by 4 added 3 times gives me 3 times 1 by 4. Repeated addition of 1 by 4 is 3 times 1 by 4 which was nothing as 3 by 4. So we realize that a common fraction is nothing but a multiple of unit fraction. So now 1 by 4 is a unit fraction. So the common fraction turned out to be a multiple of unit fractions. So I can say that common fraction P by Q would be P times 1 by Q which is a unit fraction. So this common fraction again became a multiple of unit fraction. So now we have seen that integers could not always represent the result of division. So I introduced fractions. Now I expand my number system. I include these fractions also to integers. Integers plus fractions would give me a collection of numbers which I call as rational numbers. Rational numbers could be represented as P by Q that is as a common fraction. But the important thing was that Q could not be 0. Why? Because dividing by 0 was meaningless. So we could not have Q as 0. That is how we defined rational numbers. Now we said that rational numbers included both integers and fractions. Now this is a fraction. When would this be an integer? When Q would be 1. So as soon as Q is 1, this number P by Q, the rational number P by Q represents an integer. So for that I can say that any number, say 2, say 10, any integer could be written as a fraction. How? If I put it, if I make the denominator 1, I can write this integer 2 as a fraction, 2 by 1. 10 by 1. So any integer can be written as a fraction. Similarly, any fraction with the base 1, any fraction with the base 1 would turn out to be an integer which is 3. Is the same as 3. So 3 can be written as 3 by 1 and 3 by 1 can be said to be just the number 3, the integer 3. So now, why were these rational numbers called as rational numbers? Why was it so that they were named rational numbers? Well, they were not initially named rational numbers, but later what they realized is that this number P by Q, which is the rational number, could be expressed as a ratio. P is to Q. They realized that the ratio P is to Q is nothing but P by Q, which is the rational number. So these numbers were called rational numbers later, which means that these numbers could be expressed as a ratio. So any rational number can be expressed as a ratio of two numbers. That's why they were called as rational numbers. So that's how we had integers. We introduced fractions to integers and we got rational numbers, where rational numbers are defined as P by Q, where Q cannot be zero. Now I've enclosed my set I have expanded my number system. I have included fractions to integers. Now are rational numbers closed under division? So can I say that rational numbers are closed under division? Let us see. If they will be closed, that means I take any two rational numbers, divide them, the result should be again a rational number. If that is true, then yes, rational numbers are closed. If not, then rational numbers are not closed. Let's say we define division as A by B, where A and B are integers. So if A and B can be any integers, then 
I can have, if I can take any integers, then I can take b as the integer 0. Now can this division which is a by 0 be represented by a rational number? So if I have a by 0, that is if I take b and a and b could be any integers, if I take b as 0, integer 0, I get a by 0. Now can this, di this division be represented by a rational number? Well, clearly not. Why so? Because we know that rational numbers are of the form p by q and q cannot be 0. That is, the denominator cannot be 0. Here, I need a number that would have the denominator as 0. But rational numbers cannot have denominator 0. So I can say that this division, that is division by 0, cannot be represented by a rational number and hence rational numbers will not be closed under division. But we normally define mostly, most commonly you can say that division is defined as a by b where b cannot be 0. We have seen that division by 0 is meaningless. So we need not include that in our definition. We say that division is a by b where b should not be 0 because dividing by 0 is meaningless. Now if this is my definition, then I can say that I can represent this division by rational numbers because I know rational numbers again can be any numbers p and q, a and b could be any numbers which are integers. Again, p and q also can be any numbers which are integers, but q cannot be 0. Again, for division, b cannot be 0. So, for this division, I can represent this division where b is not 0 by any rational number and hence I can say that rational numbers are closed under division. So, I will stick to defining division as a by b where b is not 0 and I would say that rational numbers are closed under division.